Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice. And I want to tell a story of uh, Rabbi Avram Yaakov of Sadagora. And there's a, one of, there's a Sabbath in the year where, as part of the Sabbath services, we sing the Song of the Sea. This is with Moses and Aaron and, and Miriam and the Song of the Sea when the Jewish people crossed the, uh, the Sea of Reeds, the waves came crashing down and drowned the Egyptian chariots, the charioteers, the horses. It was celebrated by song. There's a Sabbath where we make a point of singing the song. And there was a habit in the old days. There was a custom, a minig. On this Shabbos, where we sing Sheremayim, they would scatter uh, buckwheat, grits, kasha, uh, on the grounds for the birds to eat. It's a curious minig, but it was, uh, it was common in the old world to do this. And one day, um, someone asked uh, Rebbe Avram Yaakov of Sadagora, why do we do this? What's with the birds? What's with the seeds? What do we do? Why are we doing this? And um, Rebbe Avram Yaakov explains um, with a, a, an analogy. There was a king, a very great king, what an incredible palace and great wealth, had everything he wanted. And, um, but every once in a while, he had a little uh, pavilion, a little gazebo uh, built on the, edge of, uh, uh, on the edge of his property, far away from the castle, where he could be alone. No one else was allowed to be there. This is when the king wanted some peace and some solitude. In this pavilion, he was alone, and somehow there was a bird who always seemed to know when the king was there. And this bird, it was a songbird, would fly up and fly into the pavilion, and it would sing. It would sing for the king. And it was not the most beautiful bird in the world. It wasn't. Uh, it didn't have great plumage, it didn't, it wasn't big, it wasn't you know, spectacular. The song was okay, but, you know, but the king liked it. And he had all the musicians in the kingdom. He had all the composers, all the singers, the virtuosos. At his command, he could have called them at any time he wanted. But every once in a while, the king would go from his palace, from his castle, to this little pavilion, this far-flung little place. And he would sit there, and he would listen to the song of that tiny little songbird. Rabbi Avram Yaakov said, it's this way with the Creator. At the time, when the waves came crashing down upon the Egyptian charioteers, drowning the, the might of Egypt under the waves, it says that the angels and the seraphim sang glorious songs. All the voices of heaven, more beautiful than anyone could possibly imagine, sang the praises of God. But God wasn't really listening to them. Who was he listening to? That tiny little voice from that tiny little people that was so precious to his heart. Remember, we're always the fewest of people. We're not the biggest population. We're not the strongest. We don't have the biggest armies. We don't have the might. We're not the best singers. We don't necessarily come up with, you know, classic music the way others can. But God likes it when we pray, when we 
sing his praises, when we show our gratitude to the Creator, he likes it. And even though he could listen to everybody else, he chooses to listen to us when we come to him and we sing just for him. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immortal Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.